Again, none of these are like super by the book authentic. It's all like a little bit my own version, but. Wow. Hi, I'm Anita Shepard of Anita's Yogurt. I'm here at home in Brooklyn, and today I'm gonna make my grandma's arepas, which always remind me of home, whether it's my grandma's house or my parents' house. But I'm gonna do my own version of the recipe. And one thing that my grandma always did was to mix cheese into her arepas. It's a uh, corn flour and cheese and water. But instead of using cheese, I'm gonna use cultured butter. So it's gonna give it a lot of that richness and fattiness, but also a lot of flavor. In my family, my aunt makes arepas, my mom makes arepas, my grandma made arepas, and there's no actual recipe. Like trying to hammer down a recipe was near impossible. So it was my mission to make this into an actual recipe, and this is the closest I've gotten. So I'm gonna start by preheating my pan here. We're gonna start with a cup of masa harina. There is Mexican masa harina, which is the kind that are used to make tortillas. This is completely different. This is masa harina from Colombia. And if you find this in the stores, there's so many brands, you have to look for one that says precocida on the label right there. That means pre-cooked. So this is different from the kind of corn flour, corn meal that you would get marked masa harina that comes from Mexico, which as far as I know is not cooked and it's also treated with lime. So it has a little bit of a different flavor. It's not the end of the world if that's all you can find, but if you wanna kind of get more authentic results, look for the Colombian kind, the Venezuelan kind, sometimes even there's Peruvian brands. So we're gonna do a pretty small recipe. We're gonna use a cup of flour. And in my family, they would look at you if you were crazy, if you made this small of a portion of arepas. Like you have to make a lot of arepas, the whole bag basically. But the idea here is that you do a small recipe, you kind of get the hang of making them, and then you make another batch. And every time you make a batch, it's just gonna get better and better. And I have some hot water here. I cheated and used the microwave. It's it's not so hot that I can't stick my finger in there. It's, it's pretty, you know, hot slash warm, but you should be able to still stick your hand in there because we're gonna use our hands to make this recipe. So I'm gonna measure out a cup of water, but I guarantee you, at least today in my kitchen, I'm not gonna use the whole cup. And this is where the kind of like feeling your way through the recipe starts, where we're gonna measure out a cup of water and add half a teaspoon of sea salt. But depending on the humidity in your house, depending on the, the size of the grain, you know, this one's very finely milled. There's another brand that I have that's more coarse. Um, depending on the water content of the brand of butter you buy, it's gonna vary slightly. We just wanna get this so that the salt is dissolved and you want the taste to be like slightly less salty than seawater, but you wanna be able to taste the salt when you taste the water. Yeah, that's good. And the goal here is I wanna get the dough to come together, but I'm not gonna get it to that ideal softness until after I add the butter. So you're gonna use your hand as a whisk. We were born with this amazing whisk that also has the magical ability to tell us when the dough feels right. So I highly recommend using hands over using a tool for this step because you're gonna know more accurately when it's ready. All right, so I'm adding about half. And after I add half, I'm gonna add it a little bit at a time until it feels right. So it's starting to come together here. And I'm also smelling the corn. It smells like my grandma's house. I love it. I'm just gonna do little splashes at a time and start getting all the grains hydrated. The idea here, there's no gluten. We're not developing gluten. We're not um, really gonna be losing much, much moisture because it's pre-cooked. 
we're really just trying to get the water evenly distributed so that it's hitting all these grains of corn. Now I'm gonna add my butter. It's a lot of butter. It's a quarter cup of butter. That's quite a bit of butter. Something I found out from my mom is like, in the ancient history of arepas, originally arepas were fermented. You would make the masa and leave it for days, sometimes a week to ferment. And that was where you got the flavor from. So I, of course, being like a yogurt nerd, I love that. So this feels good. It's nice and soft and it's holding like, it's pulling away from the sides. We're gonna set that aside and let it sit for like 10 minutes. I actually have some masa, some masa that I made that's ready to go. It's already been sitting for 10 minutes. And this was from yellow masa harina. So there's white, which is the one that we usually use in my family. There's also yellow. You can use either one, whichever one you like. My favorite part of this recipe is how much you have to use your hands. And the trick that my aunt actually taught me, this is her trick for getting the shape just right, is that you use one hand, either hand, whatever works for you, whether you're right or left-handed. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand to form the back and the front. My palm is gonna be flattening the front, my fingers are gonna be flattening the bottom. And then this hand is gonna be forming the corners, the edges. This finger is gonna go around the edge, making a circle, and the other two, you see how they're making the corners? So you're kind of throwing it backwards and forwards between your two hands. Anything that comes in a patty shape, once you learn how to do this, you're good. <laughs> All right. So that one is formed. You have a nice little disc here. You wanna make sure that like you smooth over any wrinkles or cracks and it's okay if it's not perfect. I'm still learning. My family would probably look at this one and be like, nice try. <laughs> so you really just have to give yourself room to, to keep trying. So that one I'm gonna set there. And then this is the fun part of this. So I planned that, um, we were gonna kind of do like a pageant of arepas. <laughs> and I wanna make like the Colombian style. Um, I wanna do a Venezuelan style. And then with this uh, golden corn, I wanna do a New York style, which is like if you went to Queens and bought an arepa off of a street cart. And that involves um, it being stuffed with cheese. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna grate some yummy, um, this is dairy-free cheddar, but you can really use any kind of melty um, cheese you want. And we're gonna put this in the middle. So I'm gonna get the cheese stuffed in the middle there. Maybe a little more. And then <laughs> close it up. Doesn't have to be perfect once again. And then I'm just gonna go back to doing the shaping. And from the white corn, I'm going to make some mini arepas, which are my favorite, because it's something I've only ever had in Colombia. But right now, I'm gonna make like a normal sized arepa, which is like what my family would have. The kind of arepas that you see that are like heaped with stuff inside like a sandwich, that's a Venezuelan thing. We're gonna do that too. <laughs> so we've got, um, this is gonna become our Venezuelan style with um, the fillings inside. Look how cute it is. And um, the Colombian ones, which, you know, my family will serve with either hot coffee or hot chocolate. We're gonna make some minis. These are ready to go. You want like a medium, medium low heat because these are gonna kind of toast slowly in the pan. Ooh, love that sizzle. I cannot wait to eat these. <laughs> these have been going for about 10 minutes on the first side. I stopped a couple times to give them like a little bit of extra oil because I want them to get nice and toasty, but I wanna cook them slow so that it, they get a golden crust and, and less of like a chard. Um, finish, so I'm gonna start with this one. 
hit it with some more oil. And again, like, I um, will sometimes use the butter itself to oil the pan, but today I'm just gonna use oil since we're making so many. It's a little more fussy when you use the butter, but they're gonna, they've got like a nice golden crust. Mm. Smells so good. Got that like toasty corn smell going on in the kitchen. All right, so I'm just gonna let these keep cooking. These are nice and toasty on both sides. They're crispy on the outside. They're still gonna be fluffy in the middle. I'm gonna get these back on a plate. Now we're gonna cook our queen style stuffed arepa. Melty, melty with cheese inside. We have our three finished styles of arepas. We've got our little mini picada platter, mountain Colombian style, the Venezuelan, and the New York. I want to go right in. Of course, I have to start with the Colombian. So a little bit of hot cocoa here. And my arepa. Mm. Still nice and fluffy on the inside. Now I wanna try it with one of these sausages. Mm. Wow. Next we're gonna go for our queen's style here. Yes, we've got a little bit of a cheese melt in there. Mmm. Oh wow. This is so good. Mm. Wow. Finally, the Venezuelan with ropa vieja and a little bit of that um, radicchio slaw. Again, none of these are like super by the book authentic. It's all like a little bit my own version, but. Wow. That is so good. Like the lime juice and the slaw and the like seasonings, the like savory, like human seasonings and the jackfruit ropa vieja and like the toasty flavor from the outside of the arepa. Oh my gosh, it's just, I could eat this every day. It's so good. I really, cannot pick a favorite. I mean, I wanna go with Colombian and be loyal because this is what I'm used to having with my family, but they're all so, so good. I really hope that you will try one of these versions. Put your own spin on it. Once you have the basic recipe down, there are so many things that you can do with it and it's just a matter of getting comfortable with the recipe. So if you liked this recipe, if you enjoyed watching these arepas being made, please hit like and subscribe. And most importantly, in the comments, let me know what you think about these arepas. If you're Colombian and you think this is insane and you have a trick for how to do it better, leave a comment. If you've never made arepas and you have any questions about Colombian food, about making things plant-based, please comment. And you can find me at Anita's Yogurt or at Anita's Yogurt Geek. And I'm also in the Food 52 community as Anita Electric. My recipes are there. We've got plenty of recipes on anitas.com. And I look forward to seeing you back here.